Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do 2009 Amy number 2, problem number 5. So, uh, this problem looks like it'll deal with a bunch of circles and tangency points, so let's think about what our strategy for dealing with this problem will be as we read the problem. So we start with an equilateral triangle T in the circle A. We notice that this triangle T isn't pictured, so we probably will have to draw it in later. This circle A has a radius 10, we have a circle B, radius 3, and two circles C and D, both with radius 2, that are internally tangent to circle A at the vertices of T. So these tangency points right here are going to be the vertices of our undrawn triangle T. So let's draw that triangle right now. Okay, this is not a line, this is a line. Alright, and now more lines, alright. Uh, hopefully you can you guys can see that. Hopefully it's not too thin. But anyways, so we now have a triangle T. Now let's draw the radii. So if we have the point here, we have a point here, point here, point here, point here, and let's draw the radii. Alright. This one has length 3, this one has length 2, this one has length 2. And now, alright, please go away. Alright, so now let's see what else we have. Circles B, C, and D are all external and tangent to circle E, which we can see is this weird circle right here. And we want to find the radius M over N, where M and N are relatively prime positive integers, and we want to find m plus n. Alright, so we basically just want to find the radius of circle E. So when attacking problems like these, the first thing we want to do is to connect the centers. Connecting the centers is always a good idea because if you connect the centers between two circles, then it must pass through their tangency point. So not only does this give us some information about the relation between the centers of the circles, it also gives us some information about the tangency points. So let's connect the circles right now. We see that B connects right here. Okay, we can do that. Uh, a, circle A is tangent to circle C right here at one vertex, which means that we can connect A with that tangency point, and that tangency point C and A will be collinear. Same thing with, oops, it's not good. Same thing with A and uh, D. This should be a straight line. I guess. Alright, you can just imagine it as a straight line. And then finally, let's see, what else have we not connected yet? Well, we've not connected any lines, any other centers with the center of circle E, except for B. But we can still do some more, right? We can draw this one as well, as well as this one. Alright. So now we've connected a bunch of centers, and let's see what this will tell us about the problem. So, first off, we have to do something about this triangle T being an equilateral triangle. And what we want to do is we want to somehow transfer this idea onto maybe some other triangle in order to give some information about the other triangle. So, out of these, this diagram, we want to find like some sort of triangle that will help us relate the radii between... Uh, like B, circle B, circle C, and circle E, and circle A. So obviously the triangle that looks like it will be the most promising is this really skinny triangle right here, because really there aren't any other triangles that have to do with the E at all. So let's just consider this triangle right here, triangle C, A, E. So what are the properties of this triangle? Well. Let's first look at angle A. So angle CAE, well that's just equal to 180 minus angle CAB because EA and B are on a line. But what's the angle CAB? Well CAB is just equal to 120 degrees. This is 120 because this is an equilateral triangle, right? So if we connect the centers to the vertices, we get 320 degree angles. So this thing is just equal to 180 minus 120, 
which is just equal to 60. So we know that CAE, I shouldn't box that, I'll underline it, CAE angle is equal to 60. All right, so let's draw a separate diagram a little bit bigger right here. So I can write down some information. This is 60 degrees, this is A, this is E, and this is C. All right, now CAE is 60 degrees. That's all good and nice, but what can we know about the other angles? Well, the thing is that we can't really figure out what the other angles are. It's not re really that easy to figure out what angle AEC is or angle ACE is because we really don't know the position of center E. So instead, let's try to chase some sides. In particular, let's first label some sides right here. This is 3, this is 2, this is 2. What else do we know? We have a radius of 10, so this entire thing is equal to 10, as well as this entire thing is also equal to 10. And we don't know the radius of E, we try to, we're trying to find that actually, so let's just let this be R. Alright, so can we find the sides of CAE in terms of R? That's the question. So first let's look at side um, a CA. Well CA is just actually equal to 10. It's the radius of circle A. Now what else do we have? Now that we know what side AC is, we let's just try to find side AE. So in order to find side AE, we need to, well, let's just consider this entire segment right here from the tangency point to E. All right, I'll draw that right here. We have this circle. We have this bigger circle. All right, and now we have A, which is an even bigger circle. And we have E, and we have B. All right, so in order to find sine uh, length AE, let's call this tangency point right here P, then it suffices to find AE is equal to PE minus PA. All right, so what does PE equal? PE, well, that's just equal to the diameter of circle B plus the radius of uh, circle E. So this is just equal to radius plus the diameter, which is 6, and then minus PA. Well, PA is just equal to the radius of the big circle, which is 10. So this is just equal to R minus 4. So now we know that AE is R minus 4. So let's try to find CE now. So in order to find CE, well, it's uh, even easier than finding AE because we see that CE is just equal to the radius of circle C plus the radius of circle E, which is just equal to R plus 2. So in fact, now we found all the sides of this triangle in terms of R, and we also know one angle, which is in fact a very nice angle, 60 degrees. So what we can do now is use law of cosines to find R. So if we use law of cosines with respect to angle A on this triangle, then we get that this relation must be true. We have must have r plus 2 squared is equal to r minus 4 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times r minus 4 times cosine of 60 degrees. So what cosine 60 degrees, well that's just equal to 1 half. So this cancels out. And we're left with r plus 2 squared, which is r squared plus 4r plus 4, is equal to r minus 4 squared, which is r squared minus 8r plus 16, plus 100, which is 10 squared, minus 10 times r minus 4, so that's minus 10r plus 40. All right, so now we see the r's cancel out quite nicely. Then now let's combine the like terms. We have a negative 8r and a negative 10r, which gives a negative 18r if we move it onto the other side. And then we have a 22r on the left side. Now let's try to find the right side. We have a 100 plus 16 plus 40. Well, that's just 140 plus 16, which is just 156. Now we move the 4 all on the right side to get 156 minus 4, which is 152. So now we divide both sides by 22. 152 over 22, which is equal to uh, 76 over 11. This is equal to R. So let's think about what we just did here. We just found the value of R 
but r is exactly what we want to find. The problem wants the radius of circle E, which we said was r. So actually, we're already done here. We found r is equal to 76 over 11, which is thankfully in the format m over n. So our final answer should be 76 plus 11, which is equal to 87. So we would bubble in 0, 8, 7, and we would be done. Hey guys, I'm here back in another math video. Today we're going to be doing Mandelbrot uh, National Sample Test Round 4, Number 7.